Welcome to Model Steam Engines and Boilers, a collection of interesting and useful information when building model steam engines and boilers. This is part 6, selecting a suitable steam engine for the steam plant. This compilation video features clips taken from my series Making a Stuart 504 Boiler Plant. And this episode is the one where I decide which engine I'm going to use in the plant. You may find it useful to watch the entire series, there's a lot more in the series. This one's quite a simple, honest, straightforward, quite rough condition, Stuart number 4. No reversing gear, no reversing gear required. I intend to use this steam plant to drive a generator, not the one that I've just rebuilt. I'm going to make a special one for this. Although a man from Canada has just sent me a brushless motor with a very nicely made set of diodes on the end to convert everything to DC. I want to make it completely self-contained with the generator on the plant without it being too big and cumbersome so I'm going to mount the generator underneath. So when I fit the plant on the board the flywheel is going to hang over the edge. You'll see why later on. I don't mean later on in this episode, I mean later on as in early next year, which is not far away. But for the moment I need to see how this engine runs. And this really is the first run on air in the workshop I've given this engine. So what do you think's wrong with this engine? Well, I can hear two or three things going on in there. I can hear that the piston rod gland is blowing a little bit and one of the drain cocks is blowing, but that's really nothing new. But I can also hear that the valve timing's not what it should be. The timing events have been set very late. This engine is admitting the air, or steam, if it was running on steam, far too late in the cycle. The piston passes over top dead centre before the air or steam is admitted and this is no good. The air or steam needs to be admitted just before the piston goes over top dead centre and of course bottom dead centre also. This cushions everything. If you listen to the first run you will hear a knocking noise. Very shortly that will be a thing of the past. The knocking noise is all of the moving parts suddenly changing direction. By the way I've speeded this bit up because I'm messing about with the valve timing. The groove screw that holds the eccentric sheave to the crankshaft has seen better days. I'm going to change that in a minute. Also, the eccentric rod is a little bit odd. It's quite a thin piece of metal, so the bearing surface presented to the cross pin is very small. So I'm going to modify this. But the modification and rebuild of this engine won't be part of the building a 504 plant. I'll do this as a separate set of videos, and there won't be too many of them because the engine is basically okay. It needs taking apart to initially clean up all the parts and check that everything's okay. But from what I'm seeing at the moment, I'm optimistic. What I'm going to do though, right this moment, is change the grub screw for one that isn't damaged like the previous one was. Now fitted the new grub screw, with confidence I can now set the valve timing. But no matter where I set the position of the grub screw, the engine still isn't right. The only way I can get it to run successfully is to keep it retarded. And this is just because the valve isn't in the right position. By temporarily removing the cross pin, I can move the position of the valve relative to the eccentric rod. And when I put it in the correct position, as you can see and hear, it runs a lot better. Now the compressed air is being admitted at exactly the same point, just before top dead centre and just before bottom dead centre. That way, with the early admission, all the moving parts are cushioned and the engine has a new lease of life. It sounds entirely different. It's much more powerful, it runs faster and altogether much better. And as you can hear in this clip when I stop speaking, the beats are very even.
This is a modern equivalent of something called Boss White, and it's a general purpose sealant. And please note, this is definitely not silicone sealant. In my opinion, there is no place for silicone sealants of any kind on model steam engines. And in the past, I've seen many problems that have been caused directly by the application of silicone sealant. So the question that you must be asking is why am I applying this sealant to the face of the exhaust outlet on the cylinder? Well, normally, when you fit cladding to an engine, you actually cut around this bit, but the man who built this engine didn't do that, so the cladding fits over this part, and the cladding is bent to fit around this exhaust port. So the reason that I applied this sealant between the cladding and the main cylinder is to just stop any steam leaks on the exhaust side. The cladding is fixed in place with four 5BA brass bolts. In this clip, I'm cleaning off the surplus sealant and I'm mounting the exhaust outlet flange, which has a gasket on it, but you can't see it. But it's there anyway, and it's made in exactly the same way as I normally make gaskets, and I've featured that in quite a few videos. That's it for now on the subject of model steam engine gasket making. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.